Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Sierra Design. If you're here joining us today, you're probably an engineering student who is either excited, scared, or confused as to what this class really entails. Let us know which one you are in the comments. But in summary, Senior Design is a capstone undergraduate design project for engineering students. This course is a culmination of your engineering degree where as a student, you will apply what you have learned in the classroom to develop a solution to a real world issue. It usually takes over two semesters, but this may vary depending on your school. During Senior Design, you will be taking roles as a designer, tester, and project manager. Most of the time, the senior design project will also feel like you're trying to start your own startup company for which you will learn how to analyze potential markets, how to create business models, and think about extra strategies for your company. So now, I'll be going over an outline of what the senior design class covered in my school and department. For those of you who do not know, I graduated from the biomedical engineering program at the University of Texas in San Antonio. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First, you will need to find your team. This is honestly a very important step. I personally heard that in the real world, the trinity for investors is technology, market opportunity, and the team behind it all. During my undergrad career, a lot of professors would tell us to not team up with our friends, but rather find people with different skills to create an interdisciplinary team. I think this is good advice because you want people in your team that can carry on and lead different aspects of the project. Maybe someone is really good at communicating and finding contacts for developing your project as well as presenting and pitching your project. On the other hand, someone else might be great at SolidWorks or programming and can really carry on those aspects of the project. So you can see why having people with different skills and talents is good because you can all complement each other. And although this is good advice, I did learn the hard way that it is very important to be in a team with people who you have worked a lot with in the past who will most likely be your friends. You want to be with people that you know you can trust and that you already know how they work. Knowing your teammates' strengths and weaknesses beforehand can be very beneficial. Once a team is established, it is also very important to meet and discuss your expectations for this project. Although this is just a class, great things can really come out of it if you wanted to. There are a lot of competitions locally and across the nation for projects like this that have awesome cash prizes for winners, which could also help your team actually develop a startup from this project. But everyone really has to be in agreement with the expectations. Another important thing to do in the beginning is to find a good mentor. Preferably, find one whose area of expertise aligns with your project. This mentor can be a faculty member, an industry professional, or a healthcare professional in the case of having a clinical or medical focus. Once you have a team, next comes identifying the problem. In our case as biomedical engineers, this will most likely be a clinical need. There are many ways of finding a clinical need, but I personally found that the best ones are online research, interviews with healthcare professionals, and reaching out to potential sponsors like medical device companies. Identifying a problem is probably the hardest step of senior design because you want to choose a problem that is relevant and feasible. Definitely take your time to choose your problem. And something that is very important to keep in mind is to think of a need and not a solution. As engineers, it is very easy for us to be thinking of potential solutions and not really focusing on the problem itself first. So make sure to really define your need. Now that you have a clinical need, it is time to analyze the market. One of the most important things to consider here is whether there is potential in the market. Think how much of it could I really really sell? Would this be profitable? What are the competitors? Who are the competitors? What is their market share? What is the expected growth of this market? All of these things are good to consider. So now we're certain of our clinical need. We know the market. Let's start digging into the technicalities. To start to draft our solution, we first have to listen to the voice of the customer and think of our customer requirements. You can do this by interviews, surveys, anything that can help you research what the customer wants. 
For example, for our project, we created a wearable fetal monitor, but we interviewed our customers, which were mothers and OBDYNs, and listened to their requirements. OBDYNs mentioned that they would like something that measured heart rate and contractions, which are very specific requirements. On the other hand, mothers thought of wanting something that was lightweight, comfortable, and cheap. Once you have your customer requirements, you can translate these into engineering requirements. An easy way of seeing this is try to put numbers or values to these engineering requirements. In our case, we wanted to measure heart rate, so we asked, what heart rate values are we looking at? Fetuses have an average of 120 to 160 beats per minute, so we want to look at that. Mothers wanted a lightweight device, so here we ask, what is lightweight? Under one pound, two pounds, you get the idea. It is also important to put limitations or constraints to your solution. You'll find yourself trying to make this a magical miracle solution that solves everything. But you have to be realistic and really constrain your solution. Your customer and engineering requirements will be organized in a table called a design traceability matrix, which is a great visual representation of the blueprint of your solution. It will later also serve to outline how you are going to verify and validate the engineering requirements when you're ready to test your device. Once you have your traceability matrix with specific customer and engineering requirements, you will start your design phase. A lot of brainstorming happens here. Think of different solutions, approaches, and technologies you could use to solve your problem. Think outside the box and remember to think of feasible solutions. If you think of more than one solution, one way to decide which one is the best is by doing a house of quality analysis. This is used to score individual solutions according to your defined engineering requirements to really find which one is your best solution. Risk management will also come in place. Here, you will think about all the potential risks related to your solution. There are different ways to analyze risks, such as doing a fault tree analysis or an FMICA. Regardless of the mode of analysis, the purpose is to not only identify potential risks, but to assess them and determine how how they will be managed and mitigated. At this point, it is really now time to get your hands onto the physical design. You will enter the prototyping phase, start building your device, circuitry, and software if these are needed. In this phase, there will be so many changes, but so much learning as well. Be open to failure and learn how to find alternate solutions. Also learn how to find resources. You don't have to do this on your own. Seek for mentors and people who can help you in areas that you may be lacking. Again, there will be a lot of changes in the science, so just be ready for that. Once your physical prototype is finalized, it is now time for testing. Medical devices go through VNV phase, which stands for verification and validation. Here, you will verify that your device meets the engineering requirements previously defined and validate that your device meets the intended user or your customer's need. Our traceability matrix will come back into place and we will use it to define what tests are needed to verify and validate the engineering requirements that drive our device's design. So before the actual testing, you will write your testing protocols where you will really describe the purpose, procedure, scope, and acceptance criteria of each test. Some of the tests you like to include are performance testing, usability testing, mechanical tests, and more. Once the testing is over, it will be time to go back to summarizing your results and raw data into test reports. In the real world, agencies like the FDA will look at the summary of your results to determine the safety and efficacy of your device. Depending on your professor, they may also ask what kind of regulatory pathway you will follow to go through the approval process of your device so that it can be legally marketed. And this pretty much wraps up two semesters of senior design. I can definitely be very overwhelming in the beginning, but I assure you it is definitely a very rewarding experience. After all those years of theoretical learning, Sierra Design really develops you as an innovator, entrepreneur, and engineer. You will come out hopefully learning lots of new skills and amazing experiences. So this is it for this video. Let me know if you would be interested in a video focusing in one of these phases. Hopefully you learned from this video and maybe made you more excited or less scared about senior design. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like, comment, and follow us in all our social media platforms, all at The BME Life. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.